Hey guys, and welcome to today's episode of Shattercast. You'll notice it looks a little bit uh, different uh, down here in, in Florida. We're all practicing a bit of social distancing here, and uh, we're happy that we're able to still bring you the same uh, content, the same uh, hope, light, and life that we like to, to always bring here, sharing hope and faith through the arts. Uh, I'm here with my friend Derek, Gabe, Joel, my wife Hannah. Uh, we're all very excited to be able to talk to you guys today. Uh, Derek, why don't you uh, why don't you open us up, kind of share uh, how things are are going for you over over at your place? Sure, uh, <clears throat> we're doing pretty well. My roommate and I uh, just hunkering down, uh, making sure that we're having some fun, uh, doing some online stuff, and checking in on those who need to be checked in. How are you guys doing? Yeah, we're we're pretty good so far. We're uh, we're hunkered down as well. You know, my dad lives with us, so we're just uh, taking it one day uh, one day at a time. How about you guys, uh, Joel, Gabe? You know, I'm just I'm just trapped in the house. Uh, I don't have I don't have any w- w- webcam. I'm just stuck here, alone, scared. I got the hazmat suit. There are people outside. They're like putting boards on my win- windows. But apart from that, you know, it's, it's pretty fun. You know, food is low, but fasting time is here, so I think I'll be okay. Uh, you know, so yeah, it's a uh, you know, it, 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 it's pretty good. Joel's totally fine. He was doing laps outside <laughs> yesterday. Don't worry yeah. about him. <laughs> yeah, that, was, that was a really great LARP there, Joel. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I don't even know what a LARP is. I don't know Live what a action LARP rules. is. Live action rules. I don't know. I, I, I'm Game telling you, they're boarding up the windows right now. I'm scared. I'm, a, I'm scared. Save us, Please Gabe. help me. Please. Please, Gabe. I'm glad you have a plan, Joel. I have zero plan. I was ill prepared for this event. <laughs> he didn't save us. I asked him to save us, and he just encouraged Joel to continue. <laughs> uh, let's see. Okay, so today we wanted to talk about. Um, <laughs> oh, it's game back to the top. Okay, I mean, go for it, man. Well, thank you. Do thank it. you. Gosh, <laughs> I'm usually not in the podcast. I think that this is the reason I would just get cut off, but it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> uh, same. Just putting boards on the window, you know. The same thing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually just staying here at home um, buying some food however so practicing some uh, cooking skills that's not bad um, still not completely quarantined inside uh, as I know that some other places have already including Colombia actually they're starting a quarantine soon uh, but anyway so for now, just uh, taking care of the immediate needs, uh, putting some gas in my car, uh, fixing the bike, uh, things like that. Just Yeah. yeah. Uh, one thing I want to say real quick, I know we're all uh, kind of laughing and being jovial and everything. Um, one thing that I want to make sure that we get across is, you know, we, we do take this very seriously. Uh, it's one of the reasons why we are doing it in, in this sort of a format uh, for the time being. Um, you know, just want to encourage everyone, you know, if, if you're in a place that, that is locked down, if you're in an area where um, maybe there's a curfew or you're, you're not able to, to leave your home or only during certain hours, um, you know, we, we, we are very sorry um, that, that that is, is what's going on right now where our, our thoughts and our prayers are with you. Um, wherever you can, we encourage you guys, you know, to, to lift up your local government, your officials, the, uh, people on the front lines of this, your healthcare workers, nurses, doctors, teachers, uh, are alive right now, and they can definitely use any encouragement. Um, if you have to leave your house to get groceries or something, you know, be kind to the people stocking the shelves and the cashiers. Um, they're they're going through a lot right now. I know here in Florida, it, it kind of is reminiscent of hurricane prep, but that usually lasts a day or two, you know. And we're we're talking about weeks of 
of people just slamming the shelves and everything. And so I know they're tired. I know they're working a lot. Um, and so just, uh, just be an encouragement, you know, and that's what we want to do this morning is we want to be an encouragement uh, to you guys and you guys be an encouragement to those around you. Um, again, just a source of hope, a source of faith um, to, to the world now more than ever, I think is an opportunity. Uh, we as Christians can, can stand up, we can make a difference. You know, people were created for relationship and we're in a situation right now where relationships are kind of hard to maintain. And so if we really dive in on that point, I think that there's some, some real uh, good that can be done for the kingdom of God. Um, so all that being said, there's a lot that we want to talk about. Um, not just uh, uh, the, the virus in general, but just uh, the impact that it's had on our lives, on the entertainment industry. Uh, we're not medical experts. We're not going to tell you uh, what you should be doing right now. You should definitely be listening to the government officials and the, the medical experts in your area. Uh, and follow their guidelines and recommendations. Um, that's probably all we're going to say about that. Uh, but uh, Derek, why don't you uh, why don't you start with I don't know if there's maybe some movies or some shows or anything that uh, that you want to talk about that that's been impacted. Yeah, definitely. Um, <clears throat> and before I get there, just one quick thing: some things that we're doing a shout to respond to this. Uh, as you see, we're doing a special format today. Um, before everything kind of went down uh, a couple of months ago, we were talking about doing this thing called like Share It Unplug or Share It Behind Things or uh, things. So we're just doing interviews or maybe playing some games, stuff like that. So we thought now is a great time to do that. Uh, so we'll be coming to you in different formats. We have some of our team members uh, doing different devotions that we'll post. So we're excited about that. And uh, might also have some fun stuff for you and, and store uh, some games and stuff. So it'll be a good time. Um, so that's how it's impacting us here at Shatter. Again, we want to make sure we can do what we can to keep encouraging you guys. As far as the industry, man, a lot of crazy stuff is going on. A lot of movies that were set to premiere um, uh, recently or even during the summer are being pushed back a year. Um, some movies that were just out when everything kind of went down, uh, they're now since people most people can't go to theaters they're now uh, being released digitally uh so some interesting things going on i want to i want to say something real quick about yeah. that um that was a really smart move and i wasn't sure that they were going to be willing to do that because i know that's going to cut into their profit yeah um you know I'm, I'm sure they're hoping that as people are, are cooped up in their house they're more likely to subscribe or stay subscribed if they weren't already um but a movie like onward that i was actually really looking forward to um like all of the theaters that we frequent around here are all closed down right now. And so the fact that they've moved that to, to a digital format, I'm like, yay, a company actually reacting and adapting to the current uh, state of the world is uh, refreshing. So. Yeah. So it's pretty cool. Uh, uh, different video game companies are giving out like free weekends or bonus XP because they know people are uh, locked inside. So um, I think this is going to have an a impact on the industry. Um, E3, I believe, for example, was canceled because of everything going on. And there's talks where E3 in its current format is even important moving on. So I, I think we're going to see an impact for um, even if everything went back to normal tomorrow, at mm -hmm. least a year <laughs> of uh, different things. Um, I, I don't think I've seen anything impact the industry like this um, before, like the writer skill strike. That was mm -hmm. like in 2007, 2008, where some shows yep. had to be canceled because they couldn't get the writers and stuff. So um, it's going to be a big impact, but hang in there. Uh, hopefully people on their jobs will eventually bounce back and be okay. I don't know. What do you guys think about it? Well, I was thinking about the entertainment industry itself, what you were saying, and about how this, uh, how E3 got canceled. It's not only about like the gaming and the movie industry, everything that has to do with um, out outdoors activity, e everything that has to do outside of your house, including in, in my case, the live event industry, everything started to be canceled little by little. So much so that a lot of companies had to uh, let people go just for the same reason. It's like there was no work anymore because people were... Um, afraid in a sense at first and panicking and whatever all that but at the same time being concerned about being in large social gatherings so it's like well of course nobody wants to get this virus and whatever comes with it and everything that comes with it uh that started uh lessening down all the all the events started just being canceled and being canceled and being canceled and it's been what maybe like 21 days since um 
since the last time I've heard about any events outside, outdoors, whatever it is. Um, so it's been a pretty big hit in the industry, uh, talking about the music industry, about touring, about uh, companies and corporate events that got canceled, about anything like that, and anything and everything like that. So it's been interesting. Yeah, and I think one thing we've got to think about too, it's like consumers, us who consume, who buy, because games and books and movies are not necessi- they're not necessities even though we don't have to go out and buy them because we can mostly stream them now or just do a direct download, they are still taking many sales hits because many people are trying to save up their money because um, they don't know what's going to happen in the next month or so. Hmm. So they aren't buying. I know like my background being with like Amazon books and writing Amazon books, like, yeah, they are still selling, but sales have dipped at a pretty extreme. I agree because just people just, you would think that they would want to buy more because they're trapped at home all day. But the truth of the matter is uh, they want to save up their money. So they're just not buying as much. Now that could change at, at, after they get bored in about a, a week or two. <laughs> they may say, I'm going to spend some more money because I'm bored out of my mind, so I'll buy some entertainment. But from both sides of the, of like the spectrum, you know, businesses, as Gabe were saying, are closing down bigger live events. And then even consumers are not consuming as much um, just because, you know, if you're at a place where you don't have much in savings, um, you just gotta, you just gonna be smart with it. You know, um, the hope is, is like when this thing is done, we can all look at our finances and say, Hey, maybe there's some things I can adjust. So if it ever occurs again, I don't have to worry about stressing. Um, cause having a savings is a huge deal. Um, and it can really get you through this without any stress to be honest with you. Um, you know, so, but, on, on the encouraging front, though, I think that we will see people who do online businesses and whatever, I think that they will still be, be, be able to thrive. Um, potentially, when this thing all blows, blows over, um, maybe many more people who weren't hiring before may want to hire people again to kind of restock or to kind of, re, you know, to kind of get things in. So it yeah. might be rough right now, but just know that's not going to last forever. And if you're someone that's not employed or lost your job because of this, know that once it's done, they're going to want to fill those slots as fast as they can. So if you're just, uh, so if you're on top, so if you're on top of your stuff, then when it, then once it's done, you, you might be able to land a job pretty quick. Um, yeah. So. Well, and, and with that, uh, I know I have some friends actually at my church who uh, they, they work like security for events and with the event industry basically done, Um, they're effectively, they have like what, what they call it a temporary layoff where they have a job if the business stays afloat and everything continues. But in the meantime, you know, they're out of work. And, uh, I know for them, if this helps anyone, um, Amazon is hiring a lot of people because their business is going crazy right now. So a lot of delivery drivers, at least in our area, I think, uh, the base rate for an Amazon driver is like $15 an hour and they're adding it, uh, up to $17 an hour right now during a crisis. So, um, and they're, they have like an accelerated hiring process. Like I have a, a friend who applied and was hired within like an hour of the application because yeah, it was, uh, uh Carlos. Um, yeah, they're, they're just, they're really, uh, trying to, to bolster that up. And so, you know, um, I understand uh, it's not always going to be easy to find another job, especially when there's a pandemic, Um, you know, uh, telling someone just get another job. Is not really the answer? Um, But uh, you know, we're hopeful, hopeful that that things are going to improve, that the jobs will, will, will return, that the economy will swing back up once, once we got to get a handle on this. Um, I feel sad, so I want to stop talking about it. My my camera keeps getting blurry. I was going to say that another thing that I've noticed is a lot of popular YouTube channels have had to adapt their content because of this, um, which can be like a little bit of a challenge, but at the same time, um, a lack of resources uh, tends to result in creativity. So I'm hopeful that there will be some great new stuff, new ideas that come out of uh, this situation when it comes to content on YouTube and it, stuff that may not be able to be shown now, but in the future when things start to come back to normal, things that they figure out when they don't have 
everything at their disposal, things that might be able to spark new ideas. Yeah. I want to say something to everyone who is considering ever doing a Kickstarter. Uh, I want to recommend something to you. I've had uh, in the last couple months, some great and some bad experiences with Kickstarter. I will focus on a great one. And that is a company who uh, was working on a deck building game that I'm extremely excited about uh, that, that I backed a long time ago. And they had a uh, sort of a delivery schedule of later this summer. And they think they can still keep to that because they had actually given themselves several months of padding because they were hoping to, to sort of under promise and over deliver and actually get the game out in late March, mid April. But with everything being shut down and not getting pushed back a few months, they're still on target to deliver it when they said they would deliver it by. So I want to encourage you, if you're going to do a Kickstarter, give yourself some padding, regardless of if there's a, a Chinese new year or, or mimic or so nice as a consumer to be able to say, Hey, uh, they said they would deliver in July and I'm getting this in May. That breeds loyalty uh, with with that person. So, so give yourself that padding. Even if nothing happens, you've just created a lot of backers who now really like you for delivering ahead of schedule. So, um, so that's, that's great. Uh, don't, don't go with like, okay, what's the soonest we could possibly deliver this? And we're going to, we're going to say that date because we want them to think we're fast. Uh, this when it, is now <laughs> into a business podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just you know, when it, when it comes to brand loyalty, I'm going to remember the people um, who made, who made those decisions um, more than, than the others. So. Sounds good. <clears throat> I think what you're talking about there, John is creating margin as what yeah. some people say. Um, and Joel was talking about this uh, a lot of, What's going on is impacting a lot of people. There's a lot of anxiety and stuff, especially if there's concerns about losing job and money, stuff like that. And what Joel was talking about, like having savings, um, I think we all need margin in life. So we all need um, a little extra just in case. Um, and so where it's extra time or uh, extra finances save, things like that. So I think just moving forward, it's a good reminder even for myself to create margin in my schedule, you know, if on suspected stuff happens or you know and finances stuff like that so i i think one of the positive things i could come out of this time is just people um learning just some uh hopefully some positive lessons that they can use going forward um and so that just reminded me of that when you're talking about that company who had created some margin some extra mm -hmm. space just in case something happens so i was thinking about the same yeah. thing what, what you were saying about like well, individually, yes, that, that works for better. It says in Romans 8 that everything works out for good for those who love God and according to his purpose. I believe that every situation does work out for good. It's just that our perspective sometimes is shifted from where it should be. Uh, because it's true, even though this is not an ideal situation, of course, less than ideal for so many other people, it is still something that we can work out for the better. What Hannah was saying before about like more creativity because of the lack of resources and all these little things, what Joel was saying about like people understanding what, what they have to be saving on or how to adjust those little things for unexpected circumstances that happened all the time. It's not like we have control about our, uh, uh, like, we don't have control about everything that happens around. It's not like I can say like, oh yeah, today there's going to be a hurricane and tomorrow not. Well, not that I would want that there to be a hurricane, just letting you guys know. Uh, but those little things do, do, do affect, and not only individually, but even as a, as a country here in the United States, this is an unprecedented situation, something that hadn't happened before. So, of course, even the government is trying to adjust to this new situation going on. Um, as individuals, we are too. So I think giving uh, ourselves and everybody some grace and saying like, okay, if if this were to happen again, hopefully it won't. But if this were to happen, now we know what to do. You know, so that's that was what I was thinking. Yeah. I, I think agree. another thing I would encourage people to do is to seek out um, things to look forward to, uh, whether it's a personal goal or something that you're looking forward to doing once you're not in isolation anymore or even nerdy news, like uh, it's important to stay updated on the news. I know a lot of the nerdy news right now is saying things are getting postponed, but like, for example, there are good things being announced still. Like yesterday, it was announced that Rosario Dawson is gonna be playing Ahsoka in Mandalorian, and I'm super hey, stoked about that. that. <laughs> Finally getting a live action Ahsoka, and I'm, I'm really bubbly about that. <laughs> Something I'm looking forward to. Yeah. 
Yeah, Derek, uh, at Shattered, we, we have something that, that we're cooking up. I don't know if we can talk about it. I'm, I'm expecting a no, but uh, <laughs> it's going to be Probably not be too tasty. much, but we'll just say it's online. It's us having fun. Uh, we, again, we're, we're trying to figure out what we can do at Shattered to encourage you guys, and I think one of the best things we can do is – um, have some positive distraction, but that's also shares hope and encouragement. So uh, we'll announce it soon, hopefully. Uh, but yes, it'll be coming up soon. So, yeah. yeah, and that's, so that's all to say that it's important to remember during this time, um, you know, uh, people kind of go into the, like this emergency mode, right? Okay, like, are the necessities taken care of? Do I have food, water, shelter, money? Do I um, am I able to continue working? If not, what am I going to do to to pay my bills, et cetera, et cetera? And and we kind of get into these are all the things I have to have, and we deprioritize all the things we want. Um, to an extent, that's wise um, to to make sure, like in all in all eras of uh, of life, in all seasons, we should be making sure that our necessities are taken care of. Um, but during an emergency, it's it's easy to uh, disregard everything else. Um, I want to encourage us that there's a reason that the seventh day after God created everything was a day of rest. Um, even as some people are, you know, at home with their kids 24 seven, um, maybe they're a single parent and they're trying to figure out how that situation works. Uh, it goes back to what we were talking about with margin. Um, it's important to still have fun to, to even for just your sanity's sake, to still have fun. And, and whether that is um, drawing or playing hide and seek with your kids or playing a video game or a board game or a card game or, or reading a book, um, if your necessities are taken care of today, then you're not letting anyone down by taking 15 minutes or 30 minutes and just doing something that you enjoy. If anything, that it's going to help. It's going to help you get through this. It's going to help you uh, be encouraged. And, and, you know, one of the things that I'm constantly reminded of is that uh, I'm going to stop using my hands because my camera keeps focusing on my hands. One of the things that I'm constantly reminded of is this life that we live, this Christian life, isn't for us. And so I need to make sure that I'm encouraged. I need to make sure that I'm uplifted because it's my responsibility to do those things for other people. And so, uh, you know, God has, has uh, made it so evident that we're supposed to live like Christ and Christ's life was entirely about other people. And so I need to make sure that, that I'm taking care of myself so that I can take care of others, not so that I'm taken care of because God will take care of me. Right. And so I, I can't, I can't put that on you, but I would encourage you to search your heart, to pray, to take it before God. Um, and, and ask yourself, how can you be an encourager in this situation? How can you check up on a neighbor? How can you call a loved one? How can you be there for other people? Do you know someone at your church or at your workplace who's elderly and might be scared of going to the grocery store? Is there something you can do for them? Um, one of the things that Mr. Rogers, uh, it was attributed to him. We don't know if it was, I don't know if it was actually him. Um, but he said in times of crisis, you know, when you see things on the news, like when I was a kid seeing 9-11 on the news, look for the helpers. There's always people in the background helping, right? There, there were firemen, there were EMTs, there were doctors, there were chaplains at ground zero day one immediately helping. And each of us has an opportunity uh, to be that helper, to be that person who is uh, reaching out a hand, who is giving of themselves freely, uh, just like Christ gave himself freely to us. We have such an opportunity, and I would encourage each of you to, to, to pray and seek God about how he would have you seize that opportunity in your circle um, and in your sphere of influence.